Today, I wanna to talk about three lures that you need to pick up in late spring, early summer. So let's dive right on it. Now, when I'm talking about the late spring, early summer timeframe, what I'm really referring to is the post-spawn time of the year. This is that time frame directly after the bass spawn. And so during that time of the year, there's a lot of different lures that can work, but there are three different techniques that I have sitting here right next to me that I always pick up no matter where i'm going in the country no matter what type of body of water you're fishing ponds rivers lakes these will work for you now let's talk about lure number one and lure number one is the floating worm now when i say floating worm i'm not actually referring to a worm that floats this is a zoom trick worm now the technique is called a floating worm and basically all i'm going to do with this zoom trick worm is i'm going to wacky rig it just like your traditional wacky rig but it's really in the way that you work this worm now as you can see I'm using a bubblegum trick worm, and this is the exact one. This is my all-time favorite worm to use in this technique. Another color that I may use sometimes is methylate, another very bright color. Now, the way that you work this bait is you're going to cast it out, you're gonna let it hit the water, and you're going to let it sink for just a second or two, and then you're gonna kind of pump it below the surface of the water, and then let it sink another you know, second or two. But the entire time that you're using this this technique, you can actually see the worm. You can visibly see that worm. And so this is a very visual technique. You're going to see the bass come up there and hit that bait. Now, I will not use this technique if I am fishing in really muddy water. If it's kind of slightly stained to clear water, that is when I pick up this particular technique. Now, where I like to fish it all kind of revolves around fry garters. You know, something that happens in that post-spawn time frame is the female bass after they lay their eggs they're going to start making their way out to kind of the main lake and kind of going towards their summertime patterns now the male bass is going to stay with those eggs up until they hatch and then even after the eggs hatch and become little baby bass little fry that male bass is going to stay with that fry for sometimes upwards of a month so a lot of times if you're fishing in shallow water you will actually be able to see fry balls you'll be able to see a cluster of fry and you can actually take that floating worm and you can cast it directly at that fry ball and that bass that male bass that is with that fry ball is going to attack that floating worm and you're going to be able to catch that fish now a lot of times you're not always going to catch really giant bass doing this but this is a great way to catch a lot of fish now i'm not only just going to throw this at fry balls i'm also just going to kind of work this in shallow water next to cover whether that's shallow water stumps or bushes or even grass so if you have not given the floating worm a try i highly suggest it now moving on to lure number two this is by far one of my absolute favorite ways to catch a bass and that is with a walking style topwater bait now one of my absolute go-to walking style baits is a strike king sexy dog this is like i said it's my go-to this is one that i have a tremendous amount of confidence in i have caught bass in florida on this bait i've caught bass here in ohio where i live on this bait i've caught smallmouth in new york on this bait i've caught spotted bass in alabama all on this bait now i prefer the three hooked model of this bait uh, it's a little bit bigger i believe it's four and a half inches but this is the one that i throw about 95 percent of the time now me i really like pretty simple colors uh, you know this one here is called oyster it's kind of like a bone color and another one that i really like is actually bone and then the other one is just kind of a shad imitation color now the reason that i pick up this top water so much in the post spawn time of the year is that you will have a shad spawn in that post spawn directly after the bass spawn you typically have a shad spawn and one of the best ways to mimic a shad is with a topwater bait so the shad are actually going to come up during kind of those low light hours in the morning and in the evening and they're going to spawn on hard objects that can be stumps a lot of times this is rock if you have riprap banks that's a great place to find shad spawning so i'm just going to take this bait and i'm going to parallel that riprap or that rock bank work it back and forth and a lot of times if you see the shad you're going to be able to catch bass now 
I'm not gonna just throw this bait around the shad spawn. I'm going to throw this bait pretty much anywhere that is less than 10 foot of water. Even if you're out kind of on the main lake point, but it's eight or nine foot on the top of it, way out there, I will still throw this bait because a bass has no problem coming up eight, nine, 10 foot from the bottom to the surface to get this bait. So if you're fishing in less than 10 foot of water, this is the bait that I will pick up. And something that's cool about the post spawn is you will find that in a lot of these lakes, the bass will hit this bait all day long. Even in the bright sunshine, you will still have bass that come up and hit this bait. So keep a Strike King Sexy Dog locked in your hand. Something that I also really like about this bait is it is a great way to find groups of fish. Like I talked about, sometimes I will fish this along main lake points and you will actually have fish that come up and bust on it. But sometimes what you find out with this bait is it's not always the best bait to catch fish. It may be great to find them, but it's not always the best to catch them. Now, a lot of times once I get bit on this bait, I'm actually going to switch up my lures to lure number three. And this is one that is an absolute must. You need to have this with you at all times during the post spawn. And that is some sort of Kitek style swim bait. Now, as you can see here, I have a few different sizes. In this hand, I have a 3.8 inch Kitek. In this hand, I have a 5.8 inch Kitek. So you're really going to pick a Kitek, a swim bait that really kind of fits the situation that you are fishing. If I'm fishing for a lot of smallmouth bass up in the northern country, I'm going to go with that smaller swim bait. Those fish are eating a lot of smaller bait fish and gobies, and that smaller size swim bait, that 3.3, 3.8 inch Kitek, really mimics the bait fish that they are eating. Now, if I'm fishing down south, maybe I'm fishing on the Tennessee River where those bass are eating bigger threadfin and gizzard shad, that is when I'm going to pick up that bigger Kitek. And I'm just going to throw this bait on some sort of jig head. A lot of times I like a football style jig head, even in the big baits, because when I fish this, a lot of times I'm casting it out, I'm letting it hit the bottom, and I'm basically just kind of creeping it across the bottom. And so I like a football jig because it comes through that rock cover that I fish this and that hard cover really, really well. But there are times where you're not fishing it on rock. You may be fishing it more or less around grass. And in a grass situation, I'm going to use a different jig head. I'm going to use one that has a little bit more of a pointed nose to it. So really what you want to do with these swim baits is basically fit the swim bait to the situation you are fishing. If you're fishing for smallmouth on rock bottom, a football jig with a smaller Kitek is what you're gonna wanna be. If you're fishing around grass for largemouth that are eating gizzard shad, then a big jig head that has a pointed nose with a big Kitek is what you're going to want. So that's it. Those are the three lures that I always have with me during that late spring, early summer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one.